Come a little bit closer and look into my eyes. If only for a moment, boy, don't be surprised. I want you right here next to me, me. So tell me, can you spend some time? So I can hold you softly in these gentle arms of mine. And the moonlight's getting lazy. Shining on my window pane, meet me down on the midnight hour. I hear the sound of rain tonight. Tonight, tonight. let me know um, what song that I was just now singing and I'll give you a shout out in um, part one of the season finale Real Housewives of Atlanta season nine review next week so part one of the reunion I'll give you a shout out if y'all let me know what song I was just now singing Ooh, child I just couldn't stop sometimes I just feel it speaking of shouts out I want to give some shouts out on last week's um, trivia question um, and uh, trivia music question. I wanted you guys to answer um, what was I singing last week in last week's review of this show. Um, and many people answered it. Many people got it right away. It was pretty easy, especially if you're a 90s kid, 80s kid, you know who this artist was. So anyway, the artist was Aaliyah, and the song that I was singing was If Your Girl Only Knew. And I asked for the artist, Aaliyah, the song If Your Girl Only Knew, and the year that all came out and it was um 1996 golden era darling golden 96 98 everything oh my gosh remember look him them came out 96 anyway um so let me give a few shout outs to the people who got that right we have miss donnie ray shouts out to you beloved um let's see hmm we have Oh, another song that I was singing in last week's review is um, I Heard It Through the Grapevine, a Gladys Knight version. And my girl Taiwan Carr got that right. Shouts out to you. Um, let's see. Um, we have Tisha Maxwell. Shouts out to you, beloved. Um, my girl Too Feisty, 2007. Too Feisty 2007. Thank you so much. Or 2007. Love you much. She's everything. Her music knowledge is uh, with so much alike music wise. I love it. Um, a new subscriber, Lisa Michelle. Shouts out to you. 
Um, Deshaun Harrigan, shout out to you, love. Shawnee, appreciate you. Um, and Andrew Gabor. Um, so yeah, it was Aaliyah, If a Girl Only Knew. Um, and the album was um, One in a Million, Shay. I have the album, on the album, one of my favorite albums. I wish I could get all of Aaliyah's albums. I don't have her first one, and I don't have um, her last one that she did. But I think her family, like, took all her music or whatever, like, offline. And I don't think you can purchase her albums in the stores either. So, I don't know. It's kind of unfortunate. I don't know. Mm -mm. <clears throat> okay, getting straight into this video. Well, not really. We're like five minutes, six minutes in. Anyway, <clears throat> um, where do I want to go? Okay, we started off with um, Chateau Charade. She's meeting with her event planner and, you know, still tow trucks and shit outside the yard and the yard. And, you know, they're still doing their thing, dipping it and doing it. Um... She's talking and she wants this big event. Her main thing is she wants this event to be bigger than Kenya's and all that. It's just so interesting. But Kenya ain't going to help you out with all them bills you got to pay, sis. So you need to not worry about Kenya. And it's just, you know, I'm I'm very proud of Sheree for accomplishing this, you know, being being doing it by herself and all that. But how you going to, unless you just show out every season of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, however long it lasts. And, you know, you just have a guaranteed check. That's the only way that I can think of that you could keep this, these bills up. Because, sis, and you just better hope and pray people buy that book. Because I don't know, like, what else to tell you. Like, this, I'm proud of you for, for getting it done and, and sticking by your guns and not needing any help and all that. And I appreciate that. But um, it's just the upkeep of this house. It's just going to be crazy. And it's just you, your kids is grown. I'm sure they're going to be back and forth staying there or whatever sometimes, but they're going to have their own life, have their own, you know, apartments or whatever. So it's just, it's just you. This is just all for show. And I personally just want, want, wouldn't want everybody to know where I stay at. Like, I don't understand that. Like, and Cynthia, um, the show, the scene of, um, with Cynthia, um, Lake Bailey, Lake Bailey is beautiful, but beloved, like, I'll be scared about some damn crocodiles or some damn alligators, alligators coming up, some damn crocs coming up out the damn lake and coming to eat my ass, jeepers creepers, some damn um, creepers and pedophiles in the woods looking at you because she ain't got no blinds. Why these folks don't be having no blinds? I'm going off on an old nasty tangent, but y'all know how I do. Like, um, and if you don't know, if you're a new subscriber, welcome, welcome. Um, but I, mm -mm. my mom always told me, she was like, look, wherever you stay at, no matter what, you have your ass some blinds or some, or put a sheet up or put a comforter up, a whole mattress, whatever you need to do. Cause people is crazy. Like I said, the, she, she just has these big, beautiful, long ass, gigantic windows with no blinds. It's just, people can just look right on in. So I don't know. Maybe it's a secluded area. Maybe they can't get to it, but you could, I don't know. It's just, I don't do all them trees and mm -mm. I don't know. I'm not being paranoid. Y'all understand what I'm trying to say? Like, I'm just mm -mm. nervous. I mean, I guess Noelle's going to be, you know, back and forth staying with, but Noelle's, Noelle's going to school too. So it's just mainly going to be Cynthia in that house by herself. I don't know. I just think that's dangerous. Maybe it's just me, but mm mm. You know, if I had a whole bunch of money, I would definitely get me a house and all that kind of stuff. I don't think I would get, like, do I want something secluded or do I want something, like, near a lot of people? I don't know. But it's not going to be in the fucking woods. Mm -mm. I can fight, but I'm just one damn person. There's only so much I could do. I might run, you know, so it's just too vulnerable. I don't know. And Cynthia ass can't fight in case some shit go down. She ain't look like she ain't gonna pop nobody either. So I don't know. Anyway, um, so moving on from Chateau Charade, you know, she has a week. She's trying to get this whole opening together. That's basically what this whole season finale episode was based on was Charade getting her whole 
getting the whole thing open and, and ready for the people, darling. Um, let's see. Um, so moving on from that, um, Kenya's dogs is humping around in the floor. Um, Phaedra's playing with the kids. Portia's in there looking at Todd. They try they're playing Clue or whatever the hell. Um, probably not, whatever. Um Oh, so Candy meets up with Block, which is her baby daddy. Who did it? My baby daddy. Who did it? My baby daddy. Speaking of the nineties, y'all let me know um who sings that. Well, who raps that song? Um, and I'll give you a shout out in next week's review. So give me the name of the album, the name of the song, and the artist. Main thing is the artist though. Who that is my baby daddy? 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 Yes, he used to rock back in the hood. Yes. So anyway, um, Candy, Block, and Riley meet up. You know, this is another scene, another moment, another example of Candy forcing that child to do something she don't want to do. So you can tell that Riley's very uncomfortable. Riley's just like, why am I here? I'm awkward. Where's Arthur? And Candy was just like, baby, you have to do this. You know, your dad is finally reaching out to you. You need to accept it. You know, he's only reaching out to you because the cameras in this whole season has shown him in a bad light, has shown him as a deadbeat father. So he's finally reaching out to you because this is going to be on TV. He don't want to be seen as a bad daddy. So, right. Brother was like, oh, gosh. So, um, Block came in, Poochie Nee. He was like, what's up, Mickey Mouse? She had these, um, this little hat with um mouse ears. Um, she was just like, hi. They were talking, and Riley's just looking all around, very uncomfortable. And um, she, he was like, hey, how you doing? And Riley was just like, I'm fine. Um, so he was trying to talk to her. It was like, look, what would you recommend? What would you recommend? And she was just like, I don't know. It was like, I thought this was your favorite restaurant. I don't know. So... Um, Candy, she decides to get up and go into the bathroom. Riley was just like, why are you leaving me with him? I don't know him. Like, I have to pee too. Candy was just like, well, I'm your mother and I have to pee. So I'm gonna go pee. So Candy gets up and go pee. They try to talk. Um, and he was just like, so what's been going on with you and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I don't want you to think that I wasn't there for you. She was like, you wasn't. And um, he was like, no, I was there when you was born. Shawty, you don't remember? And she was like, no. And um, she was like, did you sign the birth certificate? And he was like, um, well, I mean, I mean, I mean. By the time Candy came back, um, they started to argue and go back and forth a little bit. Candy was just like, you've had her number ever since she was five years old. You never tried to call her. Riley had a cell phone at five years old. Ooh, child, I need to be in the Burr's household. Them escape checks was good. You hear me? Them scrub checks was good. You hear me? <clears throat> no, I don't have to go question where you were last night. Because I already know what you will say. I already know you lie, but I can't be mad at you, cause there's something that you don't know, and something, something, do your own thing, something, 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 when you're out in the club, don't think I'm not, even when you're out making love, don't think I'm not, when you're feeling good, Somebody's hot, get it hot, don't stop, just don't think I'm not, cause I'm gonna get in mine. What's coming? Music trivia question, that's another one y'all, that's another one coming back at ya, okay? On the TLC tip, alright? That's another one coming, coming at ya, Cleopatra, coming at ya, Cleopatra, live, can't stand it and say, Yes. 
Y'all ain't got to give me that one, the last one, the Cleopatra song. But if you want to, give it to me. Um, but give me the one before that one. I just got finished singing. Give me the artist. It's pretty obvious if you know. I mean, this is the Housewives of Atlanta, who I was talking about, you know. But um, give me the artist. Give me the name of the song and the album. And yeah. Yes. Now, remember, as I go on in this video and just things start to pop in my head and I just it just comes out. You know, whatever mu music uh, trivia question that I give the, the people, you guys, um, you can just name one or two or three or all of them. You know, either way, I'll give you a shout out. So just naming one is fine, two, five, three, five, four. You in the damn money. You know your songs. You hear me? Riley had to stop the kids from arguing, meaning her parents. And it was just like, okay, you know what? I'm sorry, Riley. Go ahead. And he was just like, look, just give me a chance. These, these cameras looking. Give me a chance. And Riley was just like, okay. So, you know, hopefully Block steps up to the plate and, and makes something happen. Make it happen, Mariah Carey. Who knows? We shall see. <laughs> sorry, I was just thinking something crazy. All right. Um, where do we want to go now? Um... Hmm. Like I said, this whole episode was just based around damn Sheree. Um, Sheree was um talking to the guy that's supposed to be ordering certain appliances for her um chateau. And apparently, um the guy who was in charge of that, um, it was some people that was coming over to bring her a stove and a fridge. Um, but they brought the wrong stove and the wrong fridge. So they had to send it back. And Sheree, she was upset. She was mad about that because, you know, these girls are going to talk shit about her. If something is not done, the girls are going to come at her. Um, and which, and which it, it is what it is. I mean, you know, if you know your shit ain't all the way together, since you're so worried about what these girls think or what people think in general, if you know that you don't have your shit all the way together, why would you have a housewarming, beloved? Why? Explain that to me. Knowing these nosy, messy helpers that you hang around. I don't understand it, but whatever. Of course, you know, Bravo made her do that, I'm sure. But I just, if my shit ain't all the way together, especially if I don't talk shit about somebody else's shit, if my stuff ain't all the way together, you think I'm going to invite somebody? No, it'll take a whole another six years. When I get ready to show y'all, when it's completely done, is when I show y'all. Until then, I'm going to sit and talk shit about everybody else's house. Hmm. So anyway, let's see. Let's just get, um, oh, Phaedra had a scene with um Johnny all up in the tea. Um, the attorney who uh Phaedra took him to. Said that we're gonna not handle one case, but we're gonna handle the whole case of her not paying you. Um, you know, what you're old and everything. And Phaedra, she added her two cents saying that, um, you know, um, it's, I've calculated some things, and apparently what Johnny was getting paid was about 213 an hour. And, you know, um, he talked about her, him planning Candy's whole wedding. That it was pretty much a production, which it was. She had a coming to America theme. I remember I reviewed um Candy's wedding, um way back in the archives, darling. And um, he was like, "Yeah, you know, I mean, can we get an ass tomorrow? Like, I'm just trying to see. I just want true tea." And it was just like, "Well, in Georgia, you know, you're supposed to pay somebody at least seven twenty five an hour." Um, and which still ain't shit. You know, it's just. It's, it's hard to make it, darling. Just period. Things just keep going up. You know, groceries high. Kids trying to eat healthy. Now I'm trying to lose weight and grow a child. Healthy food is a mess. Ooh, child. I can go to a buffet and pay under $10 and get full for half the day. Buying this damn healthy food, paying $10 for one meal. And be hungry again in the next hour. Mm -mm. It's unnerving. It's unnerving. 
I don't know. Anyway, um, what are we talking about? So they're talking and, um, you know, who knows if Johnny got a case or not, but Faith was definitely in hot shit. And, you know, it, I mean, it is what it is. She, she shady boots and she just sits back and like she don't do anything. That's why she gets herself in trouble. So continue to sink, beloved. You're in the sunken place. Now sink. Why don't sink? Okay. So we're going to move on to, um, if you guys haven't seen Get Out, by the way, see Get Out. Get Out is an amazing movie. It's really, really good. You guys let me know if y'all seen Get Out. It, it changed my life, honestly. Um, Let's see. <clears throat> Where do I want to go? Um, Don Juan, I guess he um is, is the phone collector. He handles the phones over there at Candy's house or a candy factory. And, you know, he lets candy them know over the phone that um you know jonathan he was trying to sue um you know candy and candy was just like look i'll just let my lawyers take care of it and so i was just like you're officially a mogul babe um apparently tyler perry at one point told candy that he set some money aside just for little situations like this when people try to sue him or whatever so y'all yeah, probably both scammers i'm just saying but, you know, we're, we're not going to put that bad energy out there. Um, so we shall see um, what, what goes on with Johnny and all that kind of mess. I'm sure his, his case is going to get thrown out, child. Flushed boots. So we get to the um, opening of the Chateau, darling. She has people up in the ceiling. She has little white women on rings. She's rolling all around doing cartwheels. It's quite lovely. She has Chateau Charest on the side, blew up. It's lovely. The who's who of Atlanta is there. Um, she invites um, everybody, pretty much the, all, the whole cast and the men. Um, Cynthia walked up with her sister Mallory. Bad, bad. Cynthia and Mallory really look just alike. Um, I've always thought they look similar. You could tell they're related, but um, they really damn near look like twins. Like, and their little get ups, and they was just bad. Like, uh, Cynthia and Mallory are two badass sisters, beautiful women. And shouts out to Cynthia. She ain't been too long turned 50. That's, that's a badass 50. You hear me? So shouts out to Cynthia Bailey, darling. And shouts out to, um, is it Mallory Bailey? Is that her last name? No, Mallory's married. Well, I won't ever see her husband. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so Portia came with Todd. You know, Todd just came to eat. Todd just here for the shits and giggles. I like Todd for Portia. Um, oh, earlier Portia had a little scene with her sister, um, and they was, um, at their dad's grave site, um, at their dad's grave, um, and, you know, that's how they're related through their dad. They have different mothers, but they, you know, they look just alike almost. Um, and, you know, their dad made it a point for them to be, um, you know, closest, be raised as, you know, whole sisters, not just half sisters. Um, so, you know, that was beautiful. But was it me during that scene with Portia and her sister? I felt like Portia was trying to squeeze out tears. Like, it was weird. It was weird. And, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, negate how she's feeling. And, you know, losing the family is terrible. I've, I've lost so many family members. You know, it's crazy. Um, but I don't know. I felt like she was trying to squeeze out tears like for the cameras or something. I don't know. I just didn't feel anything during that scene. But maybe it wasn't for me to feel. Everything ain't for everybody. You know, maybe it wasn't for me to feel. But I don't know. Y'all tell me what y'all think about that. You know, I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but it was just an awkward scene. It was just they just had a whole bunch of like random scenes in this episode. I'm just like, get to the mess. So back to the chateau. Sheree's upstairs getting ready. Everybody arrives. Um, Dwight, they dug that old fossil up um, from wherever wherever grave he popped out of. Y'all know Dwight was in um, Michael Jackson's Thriller video. He was one of the ghouls. He was one of the goblins, girl. Um, so anyway, he came in um, throwing shade. He, him and Phaedra rolled together and was talking about, oh, it done been five or six years. She finally got this house together and you know, that's the whole thing about Sheree taking them forever to get the house together and all that. When it's still not actually together. I heard that she's still not actually living in the house. But apparently Sheree 
that's just the blogs. You know, everything is the blogs on these Atlanta shows. The blogs, the blogs, the blogs. So, Sheree says she's living in the house. The blogs say that she's not living in the house. So, at this point, I'm pretty much going to believe the blogs. But, you know, we shall see, you know. Everything ain't right. So, you know, we'll see, child. I guess we'll see at this four-part reunion. The reunion is going to be four parts, y'all. Oh, darling, it's going to be exhausting. So, anyway, um, let's see. Cynthia, Mallory, Portia, and Shamia, they're talking outside. Cynthia decides to tell um, Portia that, yeah, child, um, you know, Apollo's... Um, Girlfriend Celeste, Selena, Charisse, Clarice, whatever the hell her name was. Yeah, child, she um came to um the OLG opening. Portia was just like, What? Portia was like, Well, how long they done been together? Well, who said it? <laughs> like, how long they been together? Cynthia was just like, Oh, child, it done been about four years, girl. And she was like, What? Four years? You lying? Like, who knows? Portia also had a um conversation with Phaedra when she. Um, was told about the whole situation and Paige was just like that's that's just crazy like I just can't believe that like Candy and Todd is trying to sabotage you no Phaedra Apollo is trying to get you and Todd and Peter I believe is in on it as well I y'all could let me know in the comments but I genuinely don't think that Candy is thinking about Phaedra in the sense of trying to sabotage her or ruin her life I really don't think that from Candy I don't feel like Candy gives a damn, to be honest. I feel like once Candy's done with you, she's done with you. You know, she Portia's just in hot shit with her. Because even though all the claims that she done said, but I really don't think that Can Candy hates Phaedra that much to the point where she just wants to try to ruin her. I really don't. But um, Apollo, possibly. And, you know, Todd and Peter are messy. The extra housewives with no peach. And so the, there you go. Um... So, let's see. Um, a little later on, this is actually the ending scene where, um, skipping around a little bit, um, where Candy and Phaedra had a conversation. And um, they talked and Phaedra was twirling that little thin ass 18 inches she had in her head. Um, her, her dress looked great, though. Phaedra looked great. Um... And so they were talking, and um, Candy was just like, hey, what's up? Like, what's going on? And Phaedra was just like, oh, nothing, just chilling or whatever. How you been? Good. Candy was like, well, I wanted to tell you, child, that Apollo's ex-girlfriend came over, and I had nothing to do with that. That was all my husband, and I want to apologize to you. Phaedra was just like, oh, that's fine. Phaedra said in her confessionals that she don't give a damn what Candy got to say. She is done with Candy. And I was like, woo. Well, all right. Um, Candy was just like, I mean, so I heard word around town is that, um, and the blogs is that um, you've been talking to Johnny, you've been schooling Johnny on trying to get me. He trying to take my money. She was just like, oh, that's oh, she was like, oh, that's what you heard. Oh, I heard that too, child. Phaedra, you need to stop. Some people will put on fronts till the end of time. Love you to the end of time. Oh, won't you hear me? I would give my world away to have you by my side. I will love you to the end of time. So anyway, um, loneliness. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Y'all let me know that artist, that song, that album. I live. Um, so Phage is just full of shit, as we know, and um, her and Candy are talking and. They're not really going anywhere. Phaedra, Candy was just like, well, just let me know. Did you have something to do with that? With the whole Johnny thing? Did you, like, help him out or anything? Phaedra was just like, I'm not at liberty to talk about that. I am a lawyer, you know, that's violating codes and ethics. And I just, I just don't have that information for you. I just can't do it. 
Oh, I could have fell off a chair. I was just like, I can't. So, Candy and, and Phaedra's relationship is never going to be the same, which is just very, very unfortunate because pretty much out of every relationship on the show, theirs was probably the most genuine. But it's it's over. Time to go home, child. Um, party or go home. All right, Trina Braxton. Let's see. Um, so getting back to the actual party. So this whole big thing was Kim, Zosiac is come came back and I didn't really care to see her, to be honest. I mean, Kim Zosie had never really done it for me. She she was never really one of my favorite housewives in particular, but whatever. I did like seeing her and Nene together. That was fun, but just her by herself is womp womp. Um, anyway, um, she came in, walked right on past Candy. It's been like five years since her and Candy talked and had a conversation. Um, she goes and finds Sheree. They talk. Um, they go up into the bedroom and all that stuff. Meanwhile, downstairs, we got Kenya coming in, coming in late with this split all the way up to the cooch like Tony Braxton. And um, Kenya was just like, yeah, child, I saw that bat sitting on the lot side. I died. Kenya was hilarious in this episode, I have to say. She just made me giggle like the whole time. Um, so anyway, Kenya was just like, well, child, I got to pee. Um, Candy, show me where to go. Get up. So Candy shows her, um, what she thinks is the, is the bathroom, but they go downstairs and Kenya was just like, oh my gosh, no, no, no. And we see, you know, downstairs that the basement is not done. It's not complete, which takes me back to what I said earlier in the video that you don't want nobody to have nothing, um, a one up on you, Sheree. And if you want your house to be so spectacular, if you want your house to be so much better than said Kenya or whomever, you know, you would think that you would have all your shit together before you actually have a housewarming. But, you know, whatever. I guess by the time the show came around, you wasn't ready or whatever. But anyway, you know, you invite messy people. So you need to just be prepared for the mess. But um, apparently, Sheree, she was supposed to hire some security guards to block off certain parts of the house so people wouldn't go down, but they weren't doing a good job. I guess she had no coins to pay them. Um, or they took a little snack break, and King and Candy, there was nobody around, just pooch right on down them steps. And we saw, you know, the, the war zone, as Kenya said. Um, so in the meantime, somebody goes, Sheree's friend who's helping her with the house, she goes down there to get Candy and Kenya. She tells Sheree, Sheree get mad. What the fuck is security? What the fuck is going on? Who the hell down in my basement? Tell me right now. Who the hell is there? Um, meanwhile, people are greeting. We got Lisa Wu Hartwell. Um, I'm sorry, honey, about what little Rudy did to your child. Took a baby dead. Anyway, um... Uh, we got Lisa Wu Hartwell, who's on Housewives seasons one through three, I believe, or four. Um, who else came? Mary to Madison help us came. You know, it was a cute event. It was lovely. Um, so anyway, back to that whole thing. Sheree's upset. Kim was just like, yeah, we went downstairs. I had to use the bathroom. Child. I had to pee. But I didn't know your house is unfinished. Uh, meanwhile, um, all the girls are like crowding up. We have Portia and Phage were going off on their little own um treasure hunt just all through the lady house all in the bathroom all through a shower i'm like so why y'all mad at kenya for going in the basement but you got portia and phaedra going all around the house too sheree just didn't have no money for that damn security that's all it is that's the only thing i can think of because i was just like mm -mm, no me um no pam um so Kim and Kenya, they get into this funny banter. Um, Marlo, she was just like um, telling, uh, Sheree was just like, let me give y'all a tour of the of what I want to give y'all a tour for. And Marlo was just like, um, go queen, go queen, sh show us, let the peasants follow. Uh, Marlo was just so funny. She was just like, how you going to talk shit about somebody um, and you're 80 years old and you're just now building your own house talking about Kenya. Marlo was hilarious. Still ain't got a peach, though. It's something about Marlo, the Bravo cameras and stuff, where the people at Bravo, um, they just don't like. Because I don't understand how she's consistently um, a friend on the show, Marlo, 
Uh, but she still ain't got no peak. She's been on the show how, like three years or so, just like as a supporting cast member, whatever you call it, just a, as an extra with speaking parts. But she just, she get invited on the trips. Which, oh, I don't have anything to hold. But she just can't keep no peach. She just can't get a peach. I don't understand. Maybe it's all them mug shots, child. I wonder if she got as many mug shots as um, Tommy from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. I think Tommy got more. Anyway. Um, so they go back and forth. Kim was just like, why do you have to be such an asshole? Like, who are you? Is, is it Kenya, Kendra? Who are you? Um, and Kenya was just like, child, who are you? She was just like, I did. And what? And what? And what? She was just like, I'm Kenya Moore twirling these hoes. And it is what it is. And who are you? And, um... So Kim threw an insult and Kenya threw one back. Um, Kenya was like, you know, at least I don't look like I done had five kids. And Kim was just like, you can't even have kids. You want my life. You want to be me. You know, if you wasn't such a bitch, maybe God will bless you with a child and all that kind of stuff. And um, Kenya was just like, I'm not a duck like your lips. And Kenya's lips did look the fool. Kim looks great, though, to have all them damn kids. I hear that Kim, Kim is coming back next season, but, um, I mean, if she do, whatever, um, but I don't know. I, I also heard that Phaedra and Cynthia got fired, so I, I wonder if that's true or not. Hmm. It's weird. I do want certain people to go, but, you know, after years and years of, of like, investing into the show, you grow attached to people, um. I guess, virtually. Like, y'all know what I'm trying to say? It's going to be weird not seeing them anymore. I mean, I got used to not seeing Nene, but... Hmm. But what else does Cynthia have to do? She's divorced. Peter was a huge part of her storyline. And they're divorced now, so what else? Cynthia by herself is not entertaining. She's pretty to look at, but that's about it. She has funny moments. She can be shady if she wants to, but she's not the main reason why the girls will watch. So I don't know. Who knows what they're going to do. Um, but, you know, they kept going back and forth, and it was just funny. All the girls were crowding around. So they ended up leaving, walking out. Um, Sheree, Phaedra congratulated Sheree on the beautiful home. And um, Kim, she was getting ready to leave, her and Croy. She was just like, oh, I'm going to check that bitch on the way out the door. Talking about Kenya. She said bye to everybody. Um, also, in the midst, I don't know if I said anything or not, but um, Kim and Candy, they had a conversation um, slightly. They haven't talked in over five years. Wow. We all know that um, Candy wrote, don't be tardy for the party. And it was a cute success for Kim. Uh, but Kim was money hungry and wanted all the money from it. And she couldn't really sing and didn't write the song. So I, I don't understand, sis. You get that 90s R&B contract just like everybody else did. Okay? Just like Tony did. Okay? Just like Escape did. Okay? Just like TLC did. Okay. So, I don't know. She just thought she was special. She was a white woman. But, um, so... They had that whole thing. It was very awkward between Kim and Candy. You can tell Kim really didn't want to speak. To Candy, so you know, they've always had a very like up and down type of relationship, you know, ever since they fell out their time over the song. But I don't know, it's very weird. Um, so to end, um, they do the whole little um things where they you know list what they got coming up and all that kind of stuff. Um, like I said, um, Cynthia, you know, she had her 50th and um, King is working on a PSA about domestic violence and, um, you know, they threw a little shade in there talking about she going to give Sheree advice on um, how to finish her basement. Um, Candy wrote a song or co-wrote a song with Ed Sharon, so she's still getting her coins from that. Sheree is um, hoping that the book will sell. Me too. Keep that rent up and them lights. Um, what else? Mm, Cynthia, no, Portia, um, her and Todd, there's no word on whether her and Todd are together or not. Um, who am I missing? K 
Candy, Portia, Cynthia, Kenya, Sheree, Phaedra. Um, still working on that whole custody battle. Not custody battle. The whole divorce thing with Apollo. Um, some people are saying he appealed. And I guess we'll see everything in the reunion, child. You know, they always throw things out at you. The blogs always throw things out at you, you know, when it's, when it's time for things to wrap up. And when it's time for reunion shows to come about, darling. So, I don't know. We shall see. I'm going to see y'all for next week on the reunion part one. Um, you guys stay tuned. Give me those trivia questions and anything that I talked about. Feel free to comment as usual. Um, I love you much. I am Mr. Chalaki. Mr. Chalaki on Google+. Plus. Follow me at Iskings World Instagram and Twitter. Chase Houston on Facebook at Iskings World um, 89 on Snapchat. All the information will be in the bottom bar below. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.